Okay, welcome to Teach Online TV. My name is Tyler Basu, and today I am joined by Arvin Kamse, and he's actually an entrepreneur that I met uh, in San Diego. We were both at Social Media Marketing World, and we spent some time together uh, in Mike Koenig's uh, studio there in San Diego, uh, and we were talking about Facebook Live and live videos, and he was telling me how he had been launching his courses and promoting his courses using Facebook Live. So we decided to connect, have him on the show, uh, and learn how you, as a course creator, can use Facebook Live to create some buzz and to get some sales uh, for your online courses. Uh, he's also a professional speaker. Uh, he's created multiple courses, and he's one of the highly sought-after experts on biohacking and peak performance. So he's got numerous courses on topics related to those. Uh, and again, we are here to talk about Facebook Live. So Arvin, thank you so much uh, for joining me today. I'm excited to, uh, to learn from you. Oh, thank you so much for having me. So why don't we uh, why don't we start with how you became a course creator in the first place? Uh, tell us just a little bit about your journey and you know why you decided to share your expertise with other people by making courses. Yeah, sure. So I started uh, actually about a year ago where I was uh, I had this membership program where people would just come on, um, you know, they would just get the membership and every day they would get a text from me. And it was, again, for the same topic of biohacking where people would just ask me questions about it every day. And, and I started with like unlimited text. And then when it got to like 20, 25 people, it got really crazy. And I was like, okay, I can't do that. So we just do one text a day. And then, because I've never seen that anyone else doing it, I didn't have a lot of info back when I started. These are literally text messages from a phone? Uh, it's, a, it's through an app. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. interesting. Yeah, and then um, and then so they would ask all the questions and everything, and it was fine. Like people stayed on these. Um, you know, we had people for stayed up for like six months, seven months, and and then getting results, great testimonials, and then it was just going really well. And then at some point, it got to the point that when it got like a little bit higher on double digit, uh, digit double digits of uh, clients. I started thinking, I wish there was a structure because some of these people are asking the same questions. Mm. And I wish I could just have this template. I could just pull answers from it and just give it to them because it's the exact same questions I'm seeing for different people. And then I was like, okay, first of all, probably like um, I can just go through all these interactions I've had with all these people and create a template um, of like things that people ask and then just have that. Uh, so that I could I could serve them better, and then I created that, and I was like, okay, well, this is so good. I now template to actually create a structure for my coaching with people. Then I did that a little bit. So I was with one-on-one -on -one clients. I was just doing using that structure. Then I thought, okay, I can only serve so many people with even like that uh, one text a day. It still takes time for me, unless I train someone else to do the exact same thing, which is kind of hard right now. Um, I thought, okay, so then what's the best way to do this is to actually have videos doing the exact same template and just teaching people what they were asking because that's definitely something they really needed to know, like those questions that they were asking, and then create a course out of it, and then I don't have to be there. They can just go through the course. So yeah. that's, that's how it started. Oh, okay, no, that that makes sense, and I, you know, I hear that same uh, that same process from many coaches, many consultants, anyone who's you know working with clients one on one. Uh, there comes to a point where you know their calendar's full, they're trading all of their time to work with their clients, and they're getting the same questions over and over and over again, and so usually that forms the basis uh, for the content in their course. Because they don't, that way they can just, you know, instead of answering the same questions over and over again, they can direct their clients to their course and say, you know, I have a video on that. Watch, watch that video. And then that way when they are, you know, on a call with a client, they can talk um, about more strategic things and it can be a lot more personalized. They don't have to, uh, you know, repeat some of the same things over and over again. 
but at the same time it helped you scale your time because now you've you know you've created multiple courses since then uh, mm -hmm. and you're able to help more people that way like there's no limit to how many people can access an online course so you're able to serve more people that way so i can definitely see the progression and again you know a lot of coaches consultants you know any kind of service-based entrepreneur that's often the path they take is uh, the one-on-one -on -one clients first, but then they're, when they're looking to scale things, they uh, they create the courses to serve more people. Uh, now, I want to talk to you about uh, let's let's touch on course creation uh, a little bit. Um, so, what was your process for you know picking the topics that you were going to create your courses on, uh, organizing your content? How did you know what what would be helpful uh, for your clients or for your for your target market? Uh, how did you choose like, you know, what, ki what kind of training to put in these courses? Just walk us through that a little bit uh, and then we'll talk about what you've been doing to promote your courses. Sure. Yeah. So, um, and I totally agree, you know, the scaling up, like I have people from 38 different countries in my course and that's was not like totally doable with like me actually talking with like one <laughs> Could, could you imagine the time zone uh, right, this trouble? Is just, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so yeah. Um, course creation. I so I had that little template for myself to answer questions, right? Mm -hmm. And then I thought, okay, um, if I were to just, I first first thing I did was because I had this program called Watch and Wait 30 Day Challenge. So it was for 30 days, obviously. So I thought, if I were to tell someone, one of my best clients, in 30 days. If I just were to just start him from uh, zero, from scratch, to where I want him to be in 30 days, what would I tell him? And I just started writing down everything that I could tell him, like to do every day. And then I guess it kind of evolved because I started beta testing it and I gave it to a bunch of people. I actually gave beta tested with my colleagues too. So it wasn't just clients. I beta tested it with co colleagues, so then they would tell me some stuff that was, I guess, also helpful. And the the order of things was, in my head, I thought the order was great, and I gave it to clients to try it out, and they were like, wait, it's like they were on day, let's say, six, and they wanted something from day 25. Mm. And then I was like, oh, well, this is not working. So I, I had to keep reorganizing this. Yeah. Uh, and over time, it became this 30 day that was actually working. But I think for the first two months, people from the day one they were asking, and I was like, oh, there's definitely a video about this, but uh, because like you're not there, like you can't see it. And then they started asking about things like all the way down to the end of the course so much that I started actually reorganizing it, figured it out, okay, how can I make this in order so people don't have to jump on to the end of the course come back yeah. they can still like stuff from day one so a lot of beta testing and um, I would say that free creative mode of just one night actually it was just one night I started writing down everything I thought about this course this structure and everything and and then I thought about the psychology part and then also the content so the when I say psychology part is I give the content to someone who is like talking with me, but on the digital world, the, the, other, the other person that's like taking my course may not even know me. So how much does this person value the content knowing that this is like the first time they, they see me, mm. right? Even though like they've gone through my emails, the soap opera emails, all that sequences, everything, they still, um, I think it's, I, it's apparently it's like about eight minutes per video is the average uh, people people will spend time and I was like okay so that's important I want to make it so that it's in eight minutes so everything that was going a little bit above that I would just make another video out of it or make a bonus video and I would just make sure they don't have to go through it and then so yeah th those are some of the things that I found no, um, no, th yeah. th that's great. That's great. I love that. And uh, the short videos, I uh, couldn't agree with you more. Uh, I think right in that seven to eight minute mark is where people start to tune out. Typically, mm -hmm. I've made the mistake of making really long videos, 30, 40 minutes in an online course, and then learning afterwards that people don't want to watch a video that long. You got to break it up into smaller videos. Um, I also love that you were doing beta testing. This is something that we're telling people to do all the time. Don't try to create what you think is perfect and spend months doing it and don't show anybody. Um, like, 
create something and share it with people as fast as you can because that's what you know that's what you did and you started getting feedback right away you realized that oh you know maybe this this lesson and then that one it, in that order didn't make sense and you were moving lessons around you were changing the content changing the order uh, until you had what you knew worked um, oh, yeah. for your students and then you started promoting your course to more people so I love I love that approach absolutely and just to say something about the production part the first time I did it for beta testing, I did it with a uh, with my, I think it was either my phone or I did it with my computer, like the built-in camera. Mm. And then once the beta testing was over, then I got I partnered up with a videographer, and I hard to schedule every Sunday from I want to say 8 a.m. to about 4 or 5 p.m. Uh, we would go like nonstop and just shoot videos 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 and then he would like it would take him for uh, about a week to upload them and edit them and everything and the good thing about the 30 days is that it's in order people don't have to see the video 30 day two so we had time when we launched it we could uh, still okay so you were like it. you were like dripping uh the content to them as yeah. as you were creating it brilliant yeah. brilliant you're doing all the right things these are the th <laughs> this is the the way that we that we're trying to you know, encourage people to approach course, course creation. Um, so let's talk about marketing a little bit. Um, now, I know uh, we're going to get into Facebook Live in a second here, but is there a reason you chose to do live videos versus other forms of marketing? Like, did you try anything else at all that were you successful with any other methods or unsuccessful with other methods? Like, why did you hone in on doing live videos? Yeah, so I think there were a bunch of reasons. One of them was for my membership uh, program, which was a digital membership program, so you know it was just texting, um, and it was from people from you know all over the world. They didn't know me. I used Facebook Live, and it worked. And when I started using Facebook Live for it, it was me just talking a little bit about giving content, giving free content, and then people who commented and got live. If it was a friend, obviously I could see it, and then if it wasn't, then I would just if it was on a um, like you know, people who are just viewing it and liking it, I would just see who liked it, who shared all that, and then I would contact them myself. I would go literally one by one, and then um, this was like the beginning, and it, it helped me kind of have that like a clientele like at the very beginning. Okay. And then I thought, so I had that, and I was like, okay, can I do the same thing for my course? And then so I did that. And then the other reason is um, biohacking is something that's not commonly known everywhere. Mm. Uh, people struggle to understand what it is, you know, how can you hack your biology? And this is like something you have to explain a little bit. And so it helped for me and knowing that my course is also all about videos and people have to watch videos and download things, uh, worksheets and everything, the video was a important part of the course so i thought it's helpful if people see me and just see how i deliver right. and then um during the facebook live and then just say okay so if i get that course I, i've seen some videos i like the video so maybe i get the course and i get it in a more organized fashion and like a little bit more structured mm, no that definitely makes sense and i think people want to especially with online courses where if they're going to be watching videos of you or learning from you uh, it certainly helps before you ask them to buy from you to let them experience learning from you. Mm -hmm. um, so they, they want to know that they want to know that, uh, first of all, is your topic something that interests them? But secondly, like, are you the person they're going to enjoy learning it from? So yeah. I think you do doing those Facebook lives was a perfect way to let people experience you. And then if they wanted to take their learning to the next level or get some more detailed training from you, then they could. Uh, then they could enroll in your courses. Now, were you doing these Facebook Live videos, uh, you know, from a technology standpoint? Were you doing them with any uh, other tools, or was it directly into Facebook from your phone? Like, what what was what was the setup um, technology wise? Yeah, so I used OBS. Okay. Uh, I I don't know if you're familiar with it. No. Nope. Um, okay. Yeah. So so I would. So, and I had a programmer, I have a little bit of background in programming myself, and I asked the programmer to help me, we created a third API connector uh, with Facebook. So we could, this was about, I wanna say a year ago, I wanna, and that time you couldn't go live on your desktop. Mm. 
Facebook didn't have that feature. But I was going live on my desktop, and that was exciting because people would see it and be like, wait, what, what happened? And then also, um, I was doing it with multiple people. So I would bring other people who have who had like similar topics or complementing topics. Yeah. I would have them on a Facebook Lives with me virtually. So people from all over. Oh, very cool. Like an interview or a, or a conversation yeah, at least. Exactly. Okay. And then and then I had like sometimes I had like three people more, more people, and and I um I have I have actually in the um I can share with your audience I share some of the tools and everything I equipments everything I used to, to be able to do that, mm -hmm. and then so when I was doing that the the other good thing was that every time someone else would come, they would share it with their audience. So I would get an additional promotion because they were sharing it, yeah. um, and then it would show up on their Facebook because it was tagged, and then so it was just a lot of a lot more people, a lot more eyes on my stuff because of having multiple people, and then they would share it to their groups. I would share their stuff uh, to my groups, and it was myself in it too, and so it was just a lot of uh, promotion mm -hmm. from just having multiple people on there. Ah, uh, that's that's brilliant. That's brilliant. Um, what were you doing to promote uh, your Facebook Live to your audience? Um, and were you doing anything leading up to it, or were you doing things, you know, once you were live? Just how, tell us how you're you're getting people to show up to these Facebook Live sessions. Yeah. So I found that if you don't tell people to show up, and if you're not doing it consistently, they're not going to show up. Okay. Uh, and if they do show up, they have no idea. Sometimes they show up in the middle. They have no idea how long it's going to go. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, if imagine someone just shows up, someone's busy, they don't know how long you're gonna go, and unless you tell them like, that time that they show up, um, they're just gonna feel a little bit worried that they're just gonna be there forever. And so, um, so what I, what I found was there's uh, three days before and two days before and a day before I would post a uh, I would make a Facebook post okay. with a little graphic. And then what I found also, I could build my mailing list through that because I would link uh, to my um, to my uh, opt-in mm. in a comment, first comment, not inside the post because Facebook would suppress it if you have a link in your post. Oh, okay. Um, I would have it in the first comment, and then I would tell people, hey, jo uh, if you want to get a notification for the Facebook Live I'm doing, opt-in here, you get my free mini course. I had another mini course that was free, and then that was leading up to the actual course. And then you get that, and I notify you by email and also text uh, a an hour before and a day before of the Facebook Live. Mm. So that's how I was just I was promoting it a lot. Basically. So, you, so you're you're uh, you're treating these almost like webinars, like you've got exactly. you know the reminders beforehand exactly. to help increase the show up rates. Yeah, and that's that was the whole point because I started thinking, especially when I started doing those, I started thinking, okay, so webinars are a little bit old now. Everyone's doing it. I thought, can I do something else that um, is can you know stand out a little bit? Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, I'm live. Facebook is promoting to, uh, my content, my Facebook Live, my video to all these people that I have, and then. Um, can I just do an actual webinar inside of Facebook Live? Mm -hmm. And so that's what I did. I started actually doing a Facebook Live, and with OBS, you can actually run test, like roll out testimonials. You can uh, roll out like pieces of your video. You can have music. You can have slides. And I literally did a webinar inside of Facebook Live, and that's how people could see and just um, same structure that you would do for webinars. Um, which was effective, mm -hmm. I did it on Facebook Live and it was effective too. Okay, great, great. Now that leads me uh, into my next question uh, because I know that you've actually sold uh, your course from Facebook Live. Like people have yes. come and watched the live video and at the end of the video, they're going to your sales page and signing up for your course. So what are you saying on the, uh, you know, what, <laughs> what, what, uh, how are you structuring the presentation that you give on the live video um, or are you doing, you know, multiple videos and then leading up to a sale, or is it is it one big sales presentation? Is it is it some content first and then you know a sales pitch? Just tell us, uh, you know, what you're doing to uh, encourage people to sign up for your course from from these videos. 
Yeah. So the first time I did it, which was really crazy because it wasn't expected, was I was just on a Facebook Live with uh, another person. We were just talking about my course. And I was just showing the slides, testimonials, everything, without the, having the intention of selling it live. Mm -hmm. And then I just thought, I just showed this, and then people see this, and then maybe I can repurpose this and use it as a webinar. Mm -hmm. But then I saw a bunch of people were still staying. It was like an hour and 20 minutes into the, uh, into the Facebook Live. And I was like, okay, what if I just give them right now, just give them a link to the sales page and I mean, what are we going to lose, right? These people have been interested and sat for the entire thing. And so I gave it to them and I said, hey, go to this link um, and then I'm going to post it on the, as a first comment under the uh, Facebook Lives post. And then people literally clicked on that and went and bought the program while we were live. Nice. And yeah, and it was crazy for me because I was like, wait, really? Like, I can't do that? And then so the next step is I found that you can do these, um, I don't know if you've seen these like five day challenges or seven day challenges where you just lead up to that last day, seven mm -hmm. day, you open the cart and then you show them, um, you know, you, for the first six days or for seven days, whatever that is for you, um, you would give them a lot of content and take all these people to a Facebook group and then, so then you have access to them. You can keep, um, you know, you can keep providing content, bonuses, answer questions, everything. And on a day seven, you can just, um, just say, hey, card is open. It's gonna be open for the next 24 hours, 48 hours. And then, um, you know, go here and buy it. If you found this stuff helpful, the course is actually available, blah, blah, blah. Whatever the questions that you will have for this sales. And then if you have bonuses, everything, um, I like this stacking method for a webinar. Um, um, if your audience may not know what that is, is you just say, you know, you provide content on a webinar and then, or Facebook Live rather, and then you just tell them, hey, um, you know, this is, let's say, this is, the, um, this is what I'm gonna give you. And then be like, okay, not only that, I'm gonna also give you something else and then something else. And you keep stacking things that you're gonna give them with the values of each. Right. And and then you just tell them, hey, the value, the total value is gonna be, you know, at least like 10 times more than what you actually asking for. Right. And then um, that's that helped me with the sales to, go ahead. So yes. Yeah, so, so uh, like bonuses essentially. You're yes. adding bonuses on top of um, this, the, the, the typical training or the standard training that you've got yes. inside of your course. Um, and yeah, I've, I've seen that work you know, very effectively on webinars. I've used that myself on webinars to sell my course. Um, and it's just classic sales psychology. I mean, the moment that somebody perceives what they're buying to be more valuable than the money they're exchanging for it, then it's a good deal for them. Um, and the trick, of course, is to is to do this with integrity, to actually give them things that you could charge for, like on their own. You're not just arbitrarily, you know, assigning a value to them. They actually are. They do have value. They, you know, um, they are something that somebody might even pay for separately, but you're mm -hmm. including it uh, with your course as a bonus. Um, are there any, uh, you know, mistakes to avoid uh, when doing live videos? What are some yeah. of what are some mistakes you've made or some some, you know, horror stories you can help us to uh, to, to not experience ourselves? Yeah, sure. So there are a bunch of things like the timing is really important. So prime hours is when you want to go live on Facebook, like 7 p.m. Let's say Pacific and I think 12 p.m. Uh, EST is that's a really good time. And and I would I would also build up to your to your course like as opposed to just just going live for seven days right now if you don't have any audience watching ever. Okay. Um, and so mistakes that I made I would say um, I would so there was one time I want to say that like I want to say ten minutes into the Facebook live my <laughs> my mic was off and I had no idea oh. no one said anything <laughs> and then. <laughs> And then um, until actually, like I started actually watching my recording from phone and then s understanding like what's going on. Because I would see people were dropping up and like no one was saying anything. So that was like really bad. And then um, other, I guess other mistakes that I've made is uh, just, 
Oh, the other thing is really like posting links into the uh, into the post. So if you have your the links that takes people off Facebook, mm. Facebook usually suppress that post. So that was a big deal. I think I did that. I want to say hundred days in a row. I had all these links in, inside my Facebook post. So that brought down my view a little bit. And then um, I think the other thing was I. Um, trying to think oh yeah another another thing I did was I would not some so first first couple couple of videos that I did I wouldn't have this structure that I want to uh, provide for people so I didn't know what I'm going to talk about a lot so I would just go and talk about everything and people would just be confused because if it was a client and I would talk about everything they had some context yeah. that it was helpful but for people who just jump on live they have no idea what my course is about and then um, they need the structure so what I learned was like give them three points that I want to talk about mm -hmm. and uh, even for the Facebook lives that uh, I'm gonna make a sale it would be three um, misconception or three under three things that three aha moments for them yeah. that I would just focus on so it, giving a structure to it and so w would you communicate that structure like in the post itself like yes. you, you know I'm going live and I'm talking about these three things three things okay. exactly got it yeah. got it uh, do you have any other tips for uh, increasing the engagement uh, while you're doing these live videos I mean how are you getting people to to comment to ask questions or w what's been effective for you oh yeah so um, I found that actually asking questions is really helpful because if you don't people don't just engage they right. think that you just they provide value and I took me some time to understand this and so so you want to ask them questions and then um, give what I did one time I, I actually gave gift cards and I said if you guys post pictures of you drinking this I have this drink called the rocket fuel drink mm -hmm. and I gave them a recipe and I said if you if you guys post a picture of it I give you like hundred dollar gift card for my courses and a bunch of people did that and I actually used that on my as a post on my Facebook later too. So that was helpful, like giving, making people excited, right? Yeah. And then another thing for engagement that's not specifically for engagement of a Facebook Live, but you can do with Facebook Live, that I found it's like some ridiculous number of en engagement was, um, I don't know if you've seen these, you know, in, I think about a year ago, it was really, um, something that just was present in all the different social media platforms like people would give these pictures of just say do you like this or do you like that mm. and uh, click I don't know click hard if you like this picture like it was just one picture but click hard if you like this or click um, I don't know like if you if you like this one hard if you like the other one mm. uh, it's like A and B choices and they would have people engage uh, or just yes if you like it share if you don't like it something like that right 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 and so I got that idea and it was just it's a Facebook algorithm that if people engage and comment and like things it would actually Facebook would show your post to more people and so I thought okay can I do that on a Facebook live and I did there is a so you can actually have an interactive image where if people let's say so I did something like okay do you like do you think bread is healthier or bacon? And so it's something really weird. And like, first of all, it was just uh, weird because people were like, wait, what is he talking about? And then um, I would ask them to like it if it was bread and heart if it was bacon. And there is a reason, by the way, I did that because one of um, there, there are actually a bunch of things I was going to talk about later. But just giving you an idea is that um, people would just keep commenting because they could see there was this counter on either side of the image on a yeah. Facebook live. As they were um, clicking heart or like, this thing would go up. Mm. And so there was like a war between the, the audience. And then, so that was really helpful. It got, I, I think that was like one of the most reached uh, posts that I had on Facebook w with no ads. Yeah. So that was that was helpful, and I think if you do a couple of those and then maybe mix it with the Facebook Lives, I think that would be helpful too. Mm, okay, cool. That, that's a, that's a great tip. Um, so Arvin, I just want to thank you for you know taking the time to to talk about Facebook Live with us and share your expertise. Uh, and I've just got one more question for you before we wrap up. 
um, because you are, you know, an entrepreneur who, ha- who, who speaks, who coaches others and who creates online courses. And so you're sharing your knowledge with other people uh, and you've built a business around that. Uh, so I'm just curious, what kind of an impact has that had on your life, uh, you know, sharing what you know with others, uh, creating courses, sharing your message, sharing your expertise? How has that impacted your life and your business? And, you know, if you could say something that would help inspire somebody else uh, to share what they know uh, with other people, what would you say? Oh, wow. Yeah. I mean, I get I get all these emails and messages like a couple of days ago. Someone just said these posts I think it was on Instagram, it's like saying like these posts that, and it's, you know, the, the post that I'm having on Instagram is actually from my online course, like 10 people back into my online course. And it was like, these posts are literally saving my life. And um, like comments and things that I get from people is, first of all, I didn't know I can do that, like from different countries, have that reach to people. And I think online courses actually allow me to do that. So that was a big deal of just knowing that, okay, I can kind of multiply myself and provide the information to so many people around the world. And it means a lot, because I started actually doing that, creating, I guess, providing that content for myself. Um, you know, I had like 10, 10 years of health issues to create, and I wanted to create that healthy life for myself. And I did that, and I started doing it for my mom and for my dad, um, helping them out. And then kind of going from there, so from the same exact course and from same exact structure, providing it to other people, it was it was a blessing to just be able to do that for other people. And with online course, I could do that, not with like one on one. So that was a big deal. Okay, no, that that's great. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah. Uh, well, Arvin, this has been a pleasure. Um, I really appreciate you, you know, taking the time to share your story and your advice with us. Uh, now, if our audience wants to get in touch with you, I know your main website, arvincamsite.com. We will link to that below the video. But you've also got a resource, um, a free resource that you mentioned briefly. Can you tell us uh, a little bit about what that is and uh, and where we can grab the uh, the link to to that as well? Yeah, sure. If you guys go to arvincamsitecom slash thinkific, uh, there is a, I created a PDF, some of the info I actually shared today and a little bit more, um, it's on that PDF. And there's a video training on how to use OBS so you can do your um, also webinars on a Facebook Live. That's in there too as well. And you know, you, your, your audience can use that. So arvincamsitecom slash thinkific. Awesome. Well, Arvin, thanks again, and I wish you all the best. Thank you so much.